I believe the way that I was uh, picked for the part was I had moved from Hollywood to London, and I was on a weekly uh, panel show called Jukebox Jury once a week. And I was the American girl. <laughs> and I think well, the producer saw me on, on television, and uh, they were looking for a young American actress. And that's how I got the, the job. The only thing I think I brought to the movie really was an American accent <laughs> and a certain amount of youth. They were looking for a young American girl in London, and I guess it kind of narrowed, the, narrowed it down a bit. Does that sign say Wamport Road? Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I do. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. The two things I remember most about um, the movie is, first of all, the, the amount of fog there was. Uh, they took over the largest stage in Shepperton Studios and just filled it with fog all the time. As I remember, it was very cold in the, in the set. I think they had to keep it very cold to keep the fog down on the ground. But it was, it was a lot of fog. <laughs> the second thing I remember most about that movie was the very long day I had having to scream. And you think it might be easy to scream, <laughs> but it's very hard because nobody ever really screams at the top of their lungs and screams so, so continually. But when I was being stabbed by the coven of witches, I had to scream like for a whole day and that was, I'll never forget that part. <laughs> that was one of the hardest acting jobs. It probably, my part was probably filmed in sequence because I, they didn't carry me through the whole picture. Uh, I think we did the exteriors first and then a couple of the interiors, the, my death scene and the, the um, opening where I'm talking to my boyfriend and and uh, Christopher Lee. But I, th I don't remember uh, being kept for the whole picture. I think they, they got rid of me first, <laughs> like they did in the movie. <laughs> ah, no! Let go of me! No! Ah, let me go! Ah, no! Oh, take your hands off of me! Let me go! <laughs> No! No! Oh, no! Let go of me! No! Ah! 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 Elizabeth Selwyn. No, no! Eleven. No. Let go of me! Let 12. go! Ah. Ah. Well, you know, to be honest, I didn't know um, who Christopher Lee was until right after I did the movie, my American friends told me that he was like the, Amer the British counterpoint to Vincent Price. And at that time, he wasn't an international star like he is today. So I wasn't aware of him. He seemed like a very nice gentleman, um, good voice. <laughs> and the, I think Dennis Lotus uh, was a singer. He, was, um, he played my brother. And Betta St. John was a, an American actress, although I thought she was British when we were working together. It was kind of strange because I'm... I was born in England and I moved to America and I did a, then I went to England to do the movie where I played an American but actually we filmed it in England so everybody <laughs> and I have an American accent I think but for some reason it seemed like when I watched the film I was slightly British in it everybody was kind of mid-Atlantic I think Of light, accept the sacrifice.
I'm really surprised of all the films that I've done. This is the one that most people who are real film buffs know about. And I'm just am amazed how this movie has stood up over many of the other films that I've, I've done. I just saw the film recently, um, the, new, the new cut, or the English cut, and the first thing that I, I noticed was the cinematography. Um, I think it was like way ahead of its time. It was beautifully done, and the, the uh, cinematographer was Desmond Dickinson, who went on to become an award-winning cameraman. One interesting thing that people recently have brought up to me is that there is a similarity in the structure of City of the Dead and Psycho. And I, I remember that we made s s that movie f first because I, I left London and I went back to Los Angeles and I went, I remember going to a drive-in to see Psycho and being scared to death, but not really realizing that Janet Lee was Nan Barlow <laughs> in it, and the surprise when the so-called heroine is killed after the first third of the movie. Uh, I mean, that was that's just a talking point that people bring up to me, and it's funny that sometimes you're involved with things and you don't even realize it until later when you know film buffs point these historical facts out to you. I don't know why the movie is held up. Well, it's just a it's a good movie. I mean, it's beautifully done. It's beautifully photographed and directed and it's it is timeless. I actually started modeling at 14. Um, my, my girlfriend and I were at the beach at Malibu and there was a uh, quite a famous pinup photographer and his wife who also lived down in Malibu and they saw me and asked me if I would take some some photos for them and um, that started me as a model. And I did a lot of covers of magazines at that time. The, the photographer was Peter Gowland, who's still quite well known for his, his glamour shots of women. Then I did a layout in Esquire magazine just as a model. And it was seen by somebody at RKO Studios. And they asked me if I would be under contract. At that time, that was the thing. They found young actors and put them under contract. And they taught me to tap dance and fence and s s do all these things that were never very, uh, it, it didn't come in handy at all. And then the studio actually closed at, after about six months. And I went to Warner Brothers uh, as a contract player. And I did some very small walk-ons in their pictures and their television. The, especially the uh, Western television series that they were shooting, uh, like Sugarfoot, Maverick, Cult 45, uh, can't even remember all, Cheyenne, and um, Hawaii, I think it was Hawaii Five O. I did, but that was because I was under contract to Warner Brothers and they would just come and give me like three pages of dialogue and had no idea what the story was or anything and I'd show up and <laughs> and do it. My first real picture, where I had a part, <laughs> was Darby's Rangers. And that was directed by William Wellman, who was a very well-known director. I, I was thinking about that movie, the, the similarity between that and City of the Dead is that that picture was all shot on an interior stage in at Warner Brothers in Burbank, Darby's Rangers. And they also had fog, not as much fog as we had in the other picture. <laughs> but we had a lot of fog on that set. That was, uh, that was my first picture. The contract system was, was a wonderful training ground for, for new people. I mean, there is nothing today like that. It, uh, the, the only thing slightly the same would be working on soap operas. But there's no place where new actors can really get started, no specific place. But that was a great training ground. All the big studios had a contract system and they pay you very little, but they, you know, you have the experience of actually doing bit parts or sometimes even more. And they taught you, they gave you, you know, acting lessons, lessons for everything. But it was a great system. I think it died around uh, probably at the beginning of the 60s. I think Universal was the last studio that really had a, 
a going contract uh, players list. My original idea in going into films was not to be an actress. I never had a, just this overwhelming desire to be an actress. I thought it might be nice to be a movie star, but I really wasn't. What I really wanted to do was to be a writer. Uh, and that was what my father was encouraging me to do. Um, my father was a very successful film director. He, he, we came from London because he was under contract to David Sels O. Selznick. He did uh, pictures like Jane Eyre. He was signed by Howard Hughes. He did a lot of film noir pictures. And uh, also he worked for Walt Disney. He did Mary Poppins, Absent Minded Professor, um, The Love Bug, a, a lot of the live action Disney films. But he was a great friend of Alfred Hitchcock. And I think he kind of shared Hitchcock's um, view on actors that, you know, nobody over 20 should be an actor. I think that when actors are just props. So my father always wanted me to, to be an, a writer or be something else other than an actress in films, which I ended up doing. My mother's uh, stage name is Anna Lee. And she started in films in England. In fact, my father directed um, her in a film, and that's how they met. And when they came uh, to America, one of the first films she did was a horror film. I guess it would be called a horror film called Bedlam with Boris Karloff. She did actually two pictures with Boris Karloff. The first one was not a horror film. Um, and she's now 80. Eight, 89 years old, and she's still appearing on General Hospital as Lila Quartermain. <laughs> so she's had a very good long career, but it has it's had some you know ups and downs. But right now she's she's uh, as happy as anything. Uh, I remember being on the set of um, Bedlam, uh, which was an early film. I remember being on the set of Mary Poppins. I remember being on the set of at RKO when my father was doing a film noir picture with Ava Gardner and Robert Mitchum. I remember meeting all these people, but you know, if you grow up in this, it's nothing it's nothing special. You know, you just remember it. Hitch was a good friend of my father's. Um, they socialized. They were both uh, English and they so they came from the same backgrounds. But uh, Hitchcock didn't direct the Alfred Hitchcock Presents that I did. Uh, the one that I did was directed by Stuart Rosenberg, who became a fairly successful director in his own right. My, uh, my father had directed a lot of the early episodes of um, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, but not the years that I did it. I really was never that satisfied being an actress. It wasn't a burning passion, and you really have to have a burning passion and a very large ego to be an actor <laughs> because you get rejected a great deal. And uh, in 1961, I met uh, somebody that I fell in love with and didn't want me to work anymore. So, and I wanted to have babies, so that's what I did. I, I stopped working. I had three children <clears throat> in eight years. and. Uh, I'm really glad I did. When my husband and I uh, broke up, I was looking for something to do to work. Um, and I didn't want to go back to acting. I j but the only thing I knew was the movie business. So I decided that um, I would go to work for somebody as like a, a reader, which is somebody that reads scripts and makes, um, does synopsis on the story. I did that, and that turned into story editor position, and then I got a job um, at a private f uh, film production company that had raised a lot of money to finance films, and I became the vice president of production at that company. And one of my jobs was to act as the executive in charge of production on the films that they financed to kind of keep track of the production for my company. The company was called Cinema Group. It was um, funded by Merrill Lynch. They did a private placement and raised a lot of money. And um, the first film we did was Take This Job and Shove It, <laughs> where, uh, where I went to um, 
Iowa, where we shot and spent the whole shoot out there. The second picture, right from Iowa, I went to um, Louisiana on the border between Louisiana and Texas, where we made a picture called Southern Comfort. Uh, that was one of my favorite pictures I was involved with. It was directed by Walter Hill, who was probably my favorite director of all time, or of contemporary times. And it ha had a group of young actors, Keith Carradine, Powers Booth, um, several others. And it was all shot in a swamp between Louisiana and uh, Texas. It was a fun picture to do. I definitely uh, prefer producing over acting. I was very self-conscious as an actress, and I think it's kind of surprising that I did as many films as I did. I, I really, uh, I, I really like producing a lot better. About five years ago, I uh, was looking for something to do so that I could move out of Los Angeles, and uh, the only thing I really could do, other than become involved in film, was uh, computers. So I. Uh, became a computer database analyst, and I'm a consultant for um, some large companies doing database work. So that afforded me the opportunity to move out of Los Angeles, because I got tired of those earthquakes <laughs> and that traffic. <laughs> I know there are a lot of, of fans of this film, which is amazing, and it, it, I'm really appreciative of it. It's like l being renewed again. In fact, somebody contacted me um, about possibly re remaking this picture. I don't know that, if it will happen, but there, I really want to thank all the fans uh, and the people that are interested in this, because this was made 40-some years ago which is, it's an amazing amount of time to have something that you can look at that's like current today. And I didn't realize at the time when I was making it that it, of all the films, it would be the one that would stand up probably the most, um, certainly the most as an, a, as an actress that I've made. I think that uh, with the advent of DVD is one of the greatest things that's happened to, to films, especially old films, uh, that I can think of. It's brought a whole new audience. I mean, f especially for me. I, I go out and rent DVDs and listen to the, the tracks, the, the director's comment tracks and the interview parts, and I think that's, it just gives whole new life to these older movies. And people have come to appreciate them more, I think. And especially with the quality of um, the uh, DVDs now. With this, this film, the cinematography is so crisp, and it's so wonderful to see a movie in black and white. That was when I'd, I'd really forgotten, because obviously when you're on the set, it's all in color. But I'd forgotten that it was a, a black and white movie, and somehow it just gave a whole different feeling to, this, to the film. And it was, I can't wait to be able to see it myself on DVD.